the quiet heart of Midwest City, Oklahoma, the Hatfield home nestled unassumingly on a suburban street. It was a place of warmth and laughter, a sanctuary for the young Kirsten Hatfield and her spirited younger sister, Faith. Kirsten, eight years old, with her bright eyes and curious spirit, was the light of her mother Shannon's life. The evening of May 13, 1997, unfurled like any other. After a day filled with play and giggles, Shannon prepared her daughters for bed in the room they shared, a cozy haven adorned with posters of stars and colorful drawings. Kirsten, always the responsible elder sister, helped Shannon tuck Faith into her small bed, her little face quickly surrendering to sleep's gentle embrace. As the night deepened, the house settled into a comfortable silence, the kind that speaks of safety and peace. Shannon, weary yet content, retired to her adjacent room, leaving the door to the girl's room slightly ajar. A nightly ritual, a silent promise of being there should they need her. But the tranquil night was deceptive, hiding a lurking horror in its shadows. When the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, it fell upon an unsettling scene. Shannon, waking to start the day, walked into the girl's room to rouse them for breakfast. Her heart froze as she noticed the empty space in Kirsten's bed. Faith, rubbing sleep from her eyes, had no answer to her mother's frantic question. Where is Kirsten? The room, still holding the remnants of the night's peace, offered no clues. Kirsten's disappearance was as silent as it was sudden, an enigma that shattered the morning calm. Panic gripped Shannon's heart as she searched the house, calling Kirsten's name into the still unresponsive rooms. Each empty corner she turned, each silent space she encountered, screamed a terrifying truth. Kirsten was gone, vanished into the quiet night, leaving behind a void filled with fear and unanswered questions. The initial disbelief that enveloped Shannon swiftly turned into a tidal wave of panic. She scored every inch of their modest home, calling out Kirsten's name with increasing desperation. But the house remained silent, save for Faith's confused and sleepy murmurs. Shannon's mind raced with terrifying possibilities. Had Kirsten, in a moment of childish whimsy, slipped out to play? But a glance outside revealed a world still cloaked in the dim light of early dawn, streets deserted and unwelcoming. A shiver ran down her spine as she realized that this was no simple game of hide-and-seek. Rushing to the phone, Shannon dialed the numbers of neighbors and friends, her voice trembling as she inquired about Kirsten. Each negative response tightened the knot of fear in her stomach. The neighbors, roused from sleep, could offer no solace, no sightings of the little girl who should have been safe in her bed. As the sky lightened, painting the world in shades of mourning, Shannon's dread deepened. This was not a case of a child wandering off. It was something far more sinister. Her mind flashed to the slightly open window in the girl's room. A detail she had initially overlooked in her frantic search. It was a silent witness to a nightmarish reality. Her hands shaking, Shannon dialed 911, her voice barely a whisper as she reported Kirsten missing. The minutes until the police arrived stretched into an eternity each second heavy with the weight of unspeakable fears. When the officers finally entered the Hatfield home, they were met with a scene of domestic normalcy violently disrupted by an unspoken horror. Shannon, her face etched with fear, recounted the night's events, her words punctuated by Faith's quiet sobs. The officers, trained to remain stoic in the face of tragedy, exchanged grim looks. The tranquility of their small town had been breached. A child had vanished into the thin air of a seemingly safe neighborhood. They began their search methodically, coming through the house for any clue, any sign of Kirsten. But the house, stubborn in its silence, offered no answers, only deepening the mystery of the night that had swallowed Kirsten Hatfield. The police officers, with practiced efficiency, turned the Hatfield home into a hive of activity. They moved from room to room, their eyes scanning for the smallest clue their questions sharp and focused. Shannon, her heart in turmoil, watched as they meticulously inspected Kirsten's bedroom. The room, a colorful testament to a child's joy and innocence, now felt hauntingly empty. 
The officers noted the slightly ajar window, a silent sentinel to the night's events. They peered through it, their eyes scanning the ground outside. The morning light revealed something chilling, a few small, ominous drops of blood on the windowsill. And just outside, in the dew-covered grass, a piece of children's underwear stained with blood. Shannon's breath caught in her throat at the sight. The world seemed to tilt on its axis, the morning sun too bright, too harsh against the unfolding nightmare. The officers' voices became distant echoes as they radioed for backup, their expressions grim. The discovery transformed the case. What had started as a missing child report now loomed as something far more sinister. The police cordoned off the area, their yellow tape a stark contrast against the quiet suburban backdrop. Detectives arrived, their faces set in lines of determination. They surveyed the scene, their minds piecing together the silent story told by the scant evidence. The blood was a silent scream in the quiet morning, a harbinger of a terrible deed. As the neighborhood awoke to the day, a ripple of unease spread through the community. Neighbors gathered in hushed clusters, their eyes drawn to the flurry of police activity at the Hatfield home. The news of Kirsten's disappearance, coupled with the grim discoveries, ignited a firestorm of fear and speculation. The police, now with a sense of urgency, expanded their search. They calmed the surrounding areas, knocking on doors, questioning residents, their eyes searching for any trace of the missing child. But the morning slipped away, with no sign of Kirsten, no whisper of her whereabouts. The silence of the house had spread to the streets, a community holding its breath, fearing the worst, but hoping against hope for a miracle. In the days following Kirsten's disappearance, Shannon Hatfield found herself at the center of a storm of activity, her home now a command center for the investigation. But within her, a transformation was taking place, a metamorphosis driven by a mother's fierce love and an unyielding resolve to find her daughter. Refusing to succumb to despair, Shannon became a pillar of strength, her determination unwavering even in the face of overwhelming odds. She began organizing search parties, rallying the community to join her quest. Her voice, once trembling with fear, now carried a steely resolve as she spoke to local media, her face a fixture on news reports and flyers. She pored over maps of the area, her fingers tracing paths and locations, her mind racing with possibilities. Every park, every alleyway, every abandoned building became a potential clue to Kirsten's whereabouts. She met with detectives daily, pushing them to dig deeper, to leave no stone unturned. Shannon's crusade garnered support far and wide. Volunteers, touched by her plight, came forward to help. They distributed flyers, canvassed neighborhoods, and organized vigils, their candles flickering in the night, a beacon of hope in the growing darkness. Yet, despite the outpouring of support, leads were scarce. The police, while sympathetic, were stretched thin, their resources limited. The case of Kirsten Hatfield, though urgent, was one of many they juggled. As weeks turned into months, the initial surge of activity began to wane. The media moved on to newer stories, and the volunteers dwindled. But Shannon's resolve did not falter. She continued her efforts, her presence a constant reminder of the little girl who had vanished into the night. She filled her home with pictures of Kirsten, her smiling face a silent call to action. Shannon's every waking moment was dedicated to the search, her nights filled with dreams of Kirsten, of reunions, and tears of joy. But each morning brought back the harsh reality of her absence, fueling Shannon's determination to unearth the truth to bring her daughter home. As the calendar pages turned, marking the passage of time, the case of Kirsten Hatfield settled into a haunting lull. Years slipped by, with each anniversary of her disappearance bringing a renewed wave of media attention, but no significant breakthroughs. The vibrant energy of the initial search efforts had dimmed, leaving a lingering shadow over the Hatfield family. Shannon, though wearied by the years, refused to let Kirsten's memory fade into obscurity. She found herself navigating a life that was forever altered, a life where joy was always tinged with sorrow, 
where celebrations were overshadowed by the empty chair at the table. The police, too, found themselves at a loss. The leads that had once seemed promising had trickled to nothing, leaving investigators grappling with the frustrating reality of a cold case. The file on Kirsten Hatfield, thick with reports and statements, gathered dust on a shelf, a silent testament to the mystery that had eluded them. In the quiet of her home, Shannon built a small sanctuary for Kirsten, a corner filled with her photographs, toys, and drawings. It became a place of reflection, of prayer, and sometimes, of tearful solace. It was here that Shannon found the strength to continue her quest, a reminder of the vibrant, loving daughter who had been the heart of her world. Community support, though less visible, remained steadfast. Faith, now growing up in the shadow of her sister's disappearance, became Shannon's pillar, her innocence and resilience, a source of hope in the endless wait. The case of Kirsten Hatfield became a story whispered in the community, a cautionary tale that reminded parents to hold their children a little tighter. It was a wound that never fully healed, a question mark hanging over the quiet streets of Midwest City. As the years passed, new detectives took over the case, each revisiting the old files with fresh eyes, hoping to uncover something missed, a clue that could unravel the mystery. But Kirsten remained gone, her absence a haunting presence in the lives of those who loved her. And so, the years rolled on, each one a mix of hope and despair, a cycle of remembrance and longing, as Shannon Hatfield continued her unwavering search for the truth about what happened to her daughter, Kirsten. In 2015, nearly two decades after Kirsten's disappearance, the case found new life in the hands of Detective Don Miller. A seasoned investigator, Miller brought a fresh perspective and renewed vigor to the long, stagnant investigation. He meticulously combed through the case files, poring over every detail, every statement, and every piece of evidence gathered over the years. It was during this exhaustive review that Miller made a startling discovery. The small blood samples found on Kirsten's bedroom windowsill and the outside grounds had never been fully analyzed. This oversight, buried in the avalanche of procedures and protocols, now glimmered with potential. With a sense of urgency, Miller sent the samples to the forensic lab for advanced DNA testing, a technology that had made leaps and bounds since Kirsten's disappearance. The wait for the results was tense, the air at the police station thick with anticipation. This could be the break they had long hoped for, the key that could unlock the mystery of what happened to Kirsten Hatfield. Meanwhile, Shannon, ever vigilant, received the news of this development with a cautious optimism. Her heart, scared by years of disappointment, dared to hope once more. She found herself revisiting the memories of Kirsten, allowing herself to dream of a resolution of justice. When the results finally came in, they were more than anyone had dared to hope for. The DNA did not match Kirsten's. Instead, it pointed to an unknown male. This revelation jolted the investigation to life. It was a tangible lead, a thread to follow in a case that had been starved of them for far too long. Detective Miller and his team wasted no time. They began the arduous task of cross-referencing the DNA sample with criminal databases, searching for a match. The community, reinvigorated by this development, watched with bated breath, their hopes reigniting alongside Shannon's. The break in the case was more than just a lead. It was a beacon in the long darkness, a promise that the truth, however long buried, could still come to light. For Shannon, it was a sign that her daughter had not been forgotten, that the fight for answers was not in vain. It was a new dawn of hope, rising after a long night of uncertainty and, and sorrow. The revelation of the unknown male DNA set off a flurry of activity within the police department. Detective Miller, with a newfound determination, spearheaded the effort to find a match. The task was daunting, as the DNA database contained thousands of profiles, but the team was relentless in their pursuit. Meanwhile, Shannon, bolstered by this breakthrough, found a renewed sense of purpose. She held meetings with the investigative team, offering insights and reminding them of overlooked details. The community rallied around her, 
their hope rekindled by the prospect of finally uncovering the truth. Then, a breakthrough emerged in an unexpected form. The DNA sample, after rigorous cross-referencing, found a match. The owner of the DNA was not a notorious criminal or a known suspect, but Anthony Palma, a seemingly ordinary resident of Midwest City. He lived just a few houses away from the Hatfield family, a neighbor hidden in plain sight. Palma's name had surfaced in the initial investigation, but was quickly overshadowed by other leads. Now, with this new evidence, he became the focal point of the investigation. Detective Miller and his team delved into Palma's past, uncovering unsettling details that had previously gone unnoticed. Shannon was stunned by the revelation. Palma was a familiar face, a part of the neighborhood fabric. The thought that he could be involved in her daughter's disappearance was both shocking and horrifying. It tore open old wounds, bringing a flood of emotions, anger, fear, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. The police moved swiftly, obtaining a warrant to search Palma's home. They found him to be a solitary man, his life seemingly unremarkable. But as they sifted through his belongings, they uncovered disturbing evidence that suggested a hidden darker side. As the investigation into Palma deepened, the community's perception of safety and trust was shattered. A sense of unease settled over Midwest City, a realization that evil could lurk behind the most familiar faces. For Shannon, this development was a double-edged sword. While it brought her closer to the truth about Kirsten's fate, it also exposed the harsh reality that the danger had been so close all along, hidden in the guise of a neighbor. The revelation reignited her resolve to see justice serve, to finally uncover the full story of what happened to her beloved daughter on that fateful night. The arrest of Anthony Palma sent shockwaves through Midwest City, turning the quiet community into the epicenter of a media storm. As the trial date approached, the case of Kirsten Hatfield, once a fading memory, was thrust back into the public eye. Shannon, carrying the weight of years of grief and uncertainty, prepared herself to face the man accused of taking her daughter. Each day of the trial, she sat in the courtroom, a silent sentinel, her presence a testament to her enduring love for Kirsten. Detective Miller, the architect of the renewed investigation, presented the evidence with meticulous precision. The DNA findings were at the forefront, a scientific beacon that illuminated the path to justice. The prosecution painted a picture of Palma as a predator who had lived a double life, hiding his sinister nature behind the facade of a neighbor. As the trial unfolded, the community rallied around Shannon. They attended vigils and wore ribbons in Kirsten's memory, their solidarity a source of strength for her. The media coverage was relentless, with reporters hanging on every development, every testimony. Throughout the trial, Palma maintained his innocence. His defense team argued against the DNA evidence, suggesting contamination and procedural errors. They painted him as a scapegoat, a man caught in a tragic coincidence. Shannon listened to every word, her heart aching with the need for closure. She looked at Palma, searching his face for signs of guilt, for any hint of remorse. But his expression remained impassive, a mask that offered no clues to the thoughts and secrets hidden behind it. The prosecution called witnesses who testified to Palma's character and past behaviors, revealing unsettling patterns and incidents that had previously gone unnoticed. Each piece of evidence, each testimony, added weight to the case against him. As the trial neared its conclusion, the tension in the courtroom was palpable. The jury, faced with the daunting task of determining Palma's guilt, deliberated for hours. Shannon, her family, and the entire community of Midwest City waited with bated breath for their verdict. Finally, the moment of truth arrived. The jury filed in, their faces somber. The courtroom fell into a hushed silence as the foreman stood to deliver the verdict. Shannon held her breath, her hands clenched tightly, as the words that would seal Palma's fate were spoken. Guilty. The word echoed through the courtroom, a single syllable that carried the weight of two decades of pain, hope, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Shannon's eyes filled with tears, a complex mix of relief, sorrow, 
and vindication. Though the verdict could not bring Kirsten back, it offered a semblance of closure, a step towards healing the wounds that had been open for far too long. Outside the courtroom, the news rippled through the crowd, a collective exhale after years of holding their breath. The case of Kirsten Hatfield, a mystery that had haunted Midwest City for years, had reached its resolution. But for Shannon, the journey was far from over. The question of Kirsten's whereabouts remained unanswered, a lingering shadow in the light of justice served. With the conviction of Anthony Palma, a semblance of closure was brought to the long-standing mystery of Kirsten Hatfield's disappearance. Yet the victory was bittersweet for Shannon, as the whereabouts of her daughter remained unknown. The trial had provided justice, but not the answers she so desperately sought. Determined to find the final piece of the puzzle, Shannon embarked on a new quest to locate Kirsten's remains. She worked closely with the police, who, galvanized by the trial's outcome, renewed their efforts to solve this part of the mystery. Detective Miller, feeling a personal commitment to the case, led a specialized team to re-examine old evidence and search areas previously unexplored. They conducted extensive searches in the vicinity of Palma's residence and other locations connected to him hoping to uncover any sign of Kirsten. Shannon found herself at the heart of this search, her presence a constant reminder of the human story behind the headlines. She organized community search parties, rallying volunteers who come through local parks, woods, and remote areas. Maps marked with possible search stones covered the walls of the makeshift command center they had set up. Throughout this period, the community's support for Shannon never waned. People from all walks of life joined the search efforts, touched by her unwavering determination and the tragic story of Kirsten. The bond of shared hope and collective effort brought a sense of unity and purpose to the community. Meanwhile, the police employed advanced forensic techniques, including ground-penetrating radar and cadaver dogs, in their search. Every lead, no matter how faint, was pursued with diligence and hope. Amidst this renewed search, Shannon grappled with a torrent of emotions. Each day brought a mix of hope and heartache, the possibility of finding Kirsten clashing with the fear of what that discovery would mean. The search efforts were a testament to her love and commitment, a mother's refusal to let her daughter be forgotten. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the exhaustive search continued. The community and the police remained steadfast in their resolve, Driven by the collective desire to provide Shannon and her family with the closure they deserved, the search for Kirsten Hatfield, once a story of despair and loss, had evolved into a powerful narrative of resilience, community spirit, and the enduring strength of a mother's love. Shannon's journey had touched many hearts, and together, they all hoped for a resolution that would finally allow Kirsten to rest in peace and her family to begin the process of healing. The search for Kirsten Hatfield's remains continued, months turning into years, yet the mystery of her final resting place remained unsolved. Despite the relentless efforts, the landscape of Midwest City kept its secrets, leaving Shannon and the community in a state of suspended closure. In this long journey, Shannon transformed from a grieving mother into a symbol of resilience and unwavering determination. Her story resonated far beyond the borders of Midwest City touching hearts, and inspiring others facing similar tragedies. She became an advocate for missing children, her experience a beacon guiding others through the darkness of their own searches. The legacy of Kirsten Hatfield evolved as well. Her name, once a headline in a tragic story, became synonymous with hope and communal solidarity. The community, once shaken by her disappearance, now stood stronger, united by the efforts to bring her home. Shannon, though never ceasing in her quest to find Kirsten, also worked to keep her daughter's memory alive in other ways. She organized annual vigils and participated in events for missing children, ensuring that Kirsten's story continued to shine a light on the issue of child safety and abduction. Detective Miller, who had dedicated years to the case, retired with Kirsten's file still marked as unsolved yet he passed on the legacy of the investigation to the next generation of detectives, ensuring that Kirsten's case would never be forgotten. As the years passed, 
The search efforts became less frequent, but the resolve to find Kirsten never faded. Shannon, now a beacon of strength and hope for many, continued to advocate for missing children, turning her personal tragedy into a crusade for justice and awareness. The community's involvement in the case led to stronger bonds and increased vigilance in safeguarding their children, transforming their collective grief into proactive action. And so, the story of Kirsten Hatfield, etched into the heart of Midwest City, became a testament to the power of hope, the strength of a mother's love, and the unwavering spirit of a community in the face of adversity. Though the final chapter of Kirsten's story remained unwritten, her legacy continued to inspire a never-ending echo of love, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of truth.